This is John White, Breaking Mad, talking about how to make methylamine from nitromethane uh, via a hydrogenation reaction or hydro, dro, gen, hydrogenolysis. Uh, you need five things. Now, I have literally a video on all five of these things, well, except for the palladium on carbon. But all these things, I have a video on Cornelius keg, on getting hydrogen, making hydrogen, on RC fuel, getting the nitromethane out, etc., etc. So if you want to link to any of those videos, just let me know. Okay, first thing you need, a Cornelius keg or some type of stainless steel vessel that can handle pressure. You'd want to get a Cornelius, a Cornelius keg is basically just that, a stainless steel vessel. And you can put beer or soda pop in there. And then there's imports and outports so that you can connect high pressure gases into there, mainly carbon dioxide. That way you can carbonate the beverage. Uh, so you'd need one of those. You can get those on eBay or any brewer shop, you know, where a home brewer who micro brews would go to buy supplies, you know what I mean? Uh, hydrogen, you can get any welding store, welding supply place, uh, but, you, you know, a small tank is probably going to cost you 100 bucks. Palladium on carbon, 5%. You'd have to buy the palladium metal, which is no big deal, and make the palladium on carbon, which is no big deal. And last but not least, you need the uh, nitromethane that you're going to change into methylamine, and you need this, some kind of solvent, which we're choosing, methyl, methyl alcohol. How do you get those last two things? Well, you're in luck because they come in together in a thing called RC fuel. RC stands for radio controlled. Like if you have a radio controlled car or radio controlled boat or plane, uh, some of them work on batteries, some of them work on liquid fuel like gasoline. But it's not gasoline. It's actually... Uh, nitromethane and methanol mixed together uh, somewhere between 10 and 30 percent for the nitromethane and the rest would be methanol but there are some high boiling oils and castor oils in there just a little bit so if you bought some at the you know if you're in a big city you can go get it at the store if not you can buy it on eBay or whatever and you would just distill out the because the methanol and the nitromethane form a azeotrope but who cares? You're going to combine them back together anyway. So you distill everything out, leave the high boiling oils in there, and now you have the last thing that you need. Now you can see the picture there. There's my tank of hydrogen, right? Uh, you'd have a hose coming out, and it would be connected to certain things like, uh, you know, check valve, pressure regulator, flashback suppressor, uh, a valve. Well, I guess you can just use the valve on the on the uh, tank uh, and also a pressure gauge and you can see then after all those check valves and all that stuff it goes down to the Cornelius keg there on the bottom left hand side you'll see it and inside there you would put your methanol nitromethane that you distilled and your palladium carbon five percent that you made and you would put it in there you would turn the hydrogen on so that you get a PSI of 80 that's why you need your Cornelius keg to be rated at at least 120 to 130 PSI to withstand the 80 PSI that you're going to put on this tank. Uh, stir it or shake it with a machine or stir it. You know, you got to have some movement in there. And 24 to 48 hours later, you'll be done. How do you know when you're done? Well, what you do is you turn your hydrogen on, right? When it gets up to 80, it doesn't have to be exactly 80. You, if you get it up to 90 PSI, don't, you know, it's no big deal. Just turn it off. And uh, as the hydrogen reacts, you know, it goes into solution, right? Because it gets put onto the nitromethane. And, come, and so there's less molecules in the gas part of the, of the Cornelius keg, right? So that makes the pressure go down, okay? So as the reaction goes, the pressure will go down. And every hour, you go and you check, you know, you check the pressure. You know, let's say it went down to 70 after an hour. So you open up the tank again and let it go back up to 80, you know, maybe even 90 PSI. 
turn it off, and then wait another hour. Now, when you first start doing this, it, you know, you're going to see a big, you know, it's exothermic. You, you know, you're going to be using up hydrogen kind of fast, <clears throat> at least relative to the end of the reaction. But each hour you go back, you're going to have to fill up less and less hydrogen. And after about 24 hours, uh, you know, you might not even fill any up after an hour. You might have to wait two hours and then fill it up. And then another two hours and fill it up. But somewhere between, you know, 24, 36, 48 hours, you're either going to get sick of it being so slow or it's going to be done and you're going to stop the reaction. All right, so there's the equation for it. I mean, it's just a generic equation. You got your nitromethane plus your hydrogen, methanol for the uh, solvent, palladium on cor car carbon, 5% for your catalyst. Just mix them together, like I said, stir them up and wait. You know what I mean? When it's done, uh, we'll get into that. But let's first of all, you might say, well, how much, what's the ratio of these? chemicals to use uh, well the nitromethane let's just go by molar amounts let's say you need one mole okay so that's 53.66 milliliters or 61 grams right for each mole of nitromethane i would probably put in about a gram of palladium on carbon maybe a half a gram okay and, and keep in mind i'm just guessing i've never done this experiment uh, but i would say a gram to make sure, a half a gram maybe. Uh, as for the methanol, um, I would put in two and a half moles of methanol for every mole of nitromethane and one gram of palladium on carbon, 5%. Okay? So two and a half moles of methanol is 101 milliliters or 80 grams. So those are the ratios that I would use. Um, and keep in mind, like I said, if you let's say you bought 30% uh, uh, nitromethane, you distill it out, now you got 30%. That's actually more methanol than what I'm saying here, okay? But I would just use it. I mean, the more methanol you have, that just means it will take a little bit longer to hydrogenate. That's all. It's no big deal. I would just leave it in there. Um, so anyways, let's say you're done with the experiment. Um, you the pressure won't go down and you know you put it at 80 psi and it's been that way for three hours well then nothing's happening and you know and it's not getting hot uh, the reaction is over <coughs> so you open it up and remember hydrogen is very explosive it, if it hits any kind of static charge any kind of anything it's going to blow up you know what i mean uh so vent it outside you know have a hose going outside to vent it um and now this is my guesswork on what to do after this, okay? Because I've seen other instructions and they all are saying to do the same thing, which is not what I'm doing or what I'm saying. But I'm going to say what I'm saying because it sounds more like sense to me. Um, you, uh, well, we all agree you filter the, uh, you know, once you open it up and get all the hydrogen out, you filter the solids, the palladium on carbon, uh, you might have to filter it through some sea light to get the fine particles out of there. Uh, and then you'll have this liquid, right? Methanol with hopefully a lot of methylamine in it. Use a SEP funnel. Throw it in the SEP funnel. Use a nonpolar solvent. You know what I mean? Benzene, toluene, anything that'll form two different layers. You know what I mean? With your product there. I mean with the water. Uh, the methanol. Now... Methanol is, let's say you use toluene or benzene, okay? Uh, methanol is uh, soluble in that benzene. But if you also throw some water in, okay, it will form two layers. The methanol will go into the water, and the methylamine will go into the benzene. You know what I mean? So you do that a couple times with a, salt, with a SEP funnel. You know, throw your nonpolar stuff in with some water. Forms two layers, shake it up, you know what I mean? Let it sit 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. So after you're done doing that, now you will have your methylamine inside a nonpolar solvent like benzene or toluene or whatever, ethyl benzene, whatever. <coughs> uh, so now you want to acidify. I know you want to dry it first. <coughs> so throw in some, you know, molecular sieves or some whatever. 
uh, magnesium sulfate anhydrous or some kind of anhydrous salt to soak up the water uh, then of course filter that out and that now you have this nonpolar solvent that's hopefully dry with your methylamine product in it so all you have to do is bubble HCl gas into the nonpolar solvent and your methylamine hydrochloride will precipitate out and you can filter it you don't have to really wash it with chloroform, although you could. The reason why people wash it with chloroform is because they want to uh, dissolve the dimethylamine into it, which is the impurity, and the methylamine won't isn't soluble in chloroform. But the way we're making it, we're making it from nitromethane. There sh really shouldn't be. A, you shouldn't really have to use chloroform. There should be no dimethylamine or trimethylamine in there at all. Um, because where would the end group come from to make all these extra amines? You know what I mean? Uh, so then you just have to dry it under a vacuum and you have your dried methyl, you know, nice pure methylamine hydrochloride. Now, if you didn't want to bubble any hydrochloric gas through the nonpolar solvent that had your methylamine in it, you know what I mean? So you can, it'll precip out as a salt and you can filter it. If you didn't want to do that, all you got to do is throw the nonpolar solvent with the methylamine in it, right? <clears throat> Instead of bubbling HCl gas through it, you just put it in a SEP funnel and then put some hydrochloric acid in with it, right? Shake it up and it will react and it will form the salt, right? the methyl ammonium salt or some people call it methylamine hydrochloride that will go into the water layer right so you save the water layer and then evaporate the water off and you're left with crisp the crystals you know what i mean if you use pure hcl acid you know you can just evaporate everything off and you're le what you're left with is what you're left with you know what i mean uh which would be pure methylamine hydrochloride Another thing is like when you make it from formaldehyde and uh, ammonium chloride, a lot of people will use ethanol to recrystallize the methylamine because it helps to get the ammonium chloride out of there. Uh, so you could always, if you wanted to recrystallize it in ethanol, you could, although I don't see the purpose because there's not going to be any, you know, if you bubble the HCl in, you're, there's no, you're not going to have any salts or any anything like that in there. You'll, you'll just have a pure product. Anyways, that's my guess. Remember, I've never done this reaction. And like I said, especially at the end there, I'm giving instructions that aren't even... The instructions they give are stupid. I don't... Uh, and there's a few of them that give the same stupid instructions. I don't, I don't like them. I mean, they're probably right and I'm wrong, but I, I just I don't like them. Anyways, you all have a great day. And always remember, science is great.